Hello and welcome. I am Roger Vendôme, Chief Data Scientist, and today I invite you to an introduction to the world of artificial intelligence. Together, we will demystify myths and realities, which will help us to better understand the basic concepts of artificial intelligence that surrounds us. With this course, we will understand what artificial intelligence is, but also what it is not, where it comes from, what its history is. Then we will put in perspective different aspects of artificial intelligence in various fields of activity, and we will see how to best use it and how to ultimately start a project in AI. When I introduce myself as a data scientist, I'm often asked what AI is. What is the definition of AI? And I often answer this question with another question. What is intelligence? Indeed, before we can define AI, it seems appropriate to first define what is the non-artificial intelligence, also known as natural intelligence. We realize then why it is so difficult to define AI, because we have a hard time simply defining what intelligence is. So before we venture to an answer, let's see what Darwin tells us. Darwin tells us that the species that survives are not necessarily the strongest, but the ones that are the most adaptable, adaptability being a kind of force. When you think about it, adaptation can only be done through a series of choices and therefore decisions. The most adaptable species is therefore the one that is able to make the best decisions. We find several definitions of intelligence. Personally, I really like the second one here. The ability to learn, deduce information, recognize repetitive patterns, and make decisions. Actually, seven possible forms of intelligence have been identified. We begin with the linguistic and logical mathematical intelligence that are the best known, those that give meaning to words and those that give meaning to numbers. Spatial intelligence is the one that allows us to know where we are, to find our way back, in short, to have a sense of direction. The musical intelligence that gives meaning to sounds and harmonies Bodily kinesthetic intelligence is the one that makes us aware of our body in space. This is, for example, the intelligence of athletes. Interpersonal intelligence allows us to recognize the behavioral motives between human beings. And intrapersonal intelligence, more complex, allows us to know ourselves, to understand our own behaviors and to deduce the reasons that guide our choices and decisions. Then. It comes back to the fundamental concept of making choices and making decisions. Adaptation is based on choices and human beings are condemned to making decisions. But making a decision is not easy and making choices are always been a complex and difficult challenge. Why is it so difficult for human beings to make a decision? The reason is unique. It is simply because of the uncertainty of the future. We have no idea what will happen in the future. This condemns us to ignore what the consequence of our decision will be, condemns us to always decide in uncertainty, never to know in advance whether we are making the right decision or not. First, we should define what a good decision is. We often tend to judge a decision after the fact by its outcome. It is to assume that once the decision is made, we have power over its consequences. But this is not the case. A good decision is a measured and balanced one. But the probabilities being what they are, it will sometimes have negative consequences. However, the decision could have been originally a good measured decision. Daniel Kahneman has dedicated his life and career to understanding the mechanics of human decision making and was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2002. His initial hypothesis was, is the human being naturally equipped to reason probabilistically? The answer is no, plain and clear. 
His main book, Thinking Fast and Slow, explains that human choices and decisions are based on two systems, System 1 and System 2. He did not want to give them names, not to influence our understanding. System 1 is the one that thinks fast. System 2 is the one that thinks slowly. System 1 is responsible for the survival and preservation of the species. It makes quick decisions, often in case of stress and danger. System 2 is the one that will analyze, the one that will calculate, and therefore takes much longer. But System 2 has weaknesses. It may be subject to biases that Daniel Kahneman called decision heuristics. That's what won him his Nobel Prize. Today, there are several dozen heuristics because each academic wanted to find one and give it his name. But Daniel Kahneman originally identified four, representativeness, availability, anchoring, and adjustment. The availability heuristics, for example, tells us that when making a choice, we use information that is immediately available. Our memory works like a pile, like a stack. The last information to get in is the first to get out. When we are asked to make a decision under stress, the information we use is the last input, the one that is just at the top of the stack. This is one of the reasons why marketers send us the same message all day long. They make sure that when making a purchase decision, the information about their product will be the last unavailable one. Another well-known heuristic is anchoring. If we are asked to make an estimate of magnitude, this estimate will be influenced by a recent reference, the anchor, around which we will adjust. If this anchor has been introduced by a third party, our estimate will be biased and influenced. What we should remember is that the whole concept of artificial intelligence is based on the fact that human beings are condemned to decide in uncertainty, that it generates lots of anxiety, and so human beings have developed the will to outsource the burden of decision-making to the machine. I will see you for the second lesson, during which we will explore further how to make an educated decision. See you soon.